Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Lee Elias, and I'm going to welcome you once again to another edition of Puck Drop Live, our weekly escape from what's going on in the world. I will note that today is, in fact, the uh, 31st day of my isolation, so we're about a month in. No matter where you are in the world, you're about a month in. Um, and I've got a great topic tonight uh, that we're going to discuss here. So as always, the first few minutes of the uh, the stream is always just going to be me kind of talking until some people come on so we can get the conversation going. I have done my research on the topic tonight. I have my notes that I'm looking to to the right of me. Uh, this is streaming live in We Live Hockey, Vice Hockey, Elimination Cafe, and Hockey Wraparound. So we have four different places tonight. Uh, that we're actually going to be live. So hopefully we're going to get a lot of interaction. Um, I actually, before we get going, want to thank you, uh, those of you that are watching, because uh, these episodes have really been starting to get some views. Um, these episodes have been starting to get some uh, traction, uh, not just live and on the video, but also the podcast that is recorded right from this. Um, I got a lot of compliments on last week's uh, topic, which was, uh, what was last week's, last week's to- last, wow, what was last week's topic? Uh, which was, uh, I don't remember, <laughs> but I did a topic and everybody was talking about it last week. I think it was uh, fighting. It was what is fighting's place in the NHL. Um, so if you haven't seen it yet from the title of uh, this week, tonight we're going to discuss what is the greatest rivalry in the NHL. Now, if you're watching this, you probably already have something in your head about what is the greatest rivalry of, of the NHL, but it's it's really not as simple as you think. So there probably is one, and we'll, we'll get to it, that's kind of ranked above the others. But when you look at this on a regional, national, and international level, uh, it really does have its ebbs and flows, right? There's a lot of rivalries tonight I'm going to go over you probably forgot about, some that you know about, some that were raging 10, 15 years ago that are not around today, um, and then some that have been around for a long time. So, again, we're going to be talking about that tonight. I want you to know, so what we do is... Um, we, uh, we, we put a vote out every week on what the topic's going to be in uh, the Elimination Cafe group. If you're not part of that, join that. It is a great group of hockey people. Um, we really enjoy the discussions we have in that group. That's obviously summoned from uh, We Live Hockey. But we put a vote in there last week. And this week, not only did it have the most votes, but we, the, the rivalry topic only won by one vote. <laughs> and uh, narrowly won. The other topic was how we make Elimination Cafe uh, which is going into its fourth year. Um, it's the show that really put us on the map, uh, and the, the concept for that was pretty simple, is what would happen if all the N- eliminated NHL teams ended up in a bar. Um, so we have something very special coming for that this year. Um, it's not going to be quite Elimination Cafe, but we are, we are going into production with that next week, uh, and we're very excited about that because we have some fun ideas, and it'll definitely be a nice distraction from what's going on in the world. Um, I can see everybody coming on, everybody saying hello, it's great to have you here. Again, this is an interactive live uh, video recording slash podcast, so if you do comment, I absolutely will read it if it pertains to what we're talking about, and I'll absolutely incorporate you into the conversation. But with that said, I am going to get going here. Tonight's topic is the greatest rivalry in NHL history. I'm glad you're all here for the ride, uh, and as you know, I'm going to stop or start and... Um, kind of kind of do it again. I'm going to actually open the card here. I'm going to try something. It says, what is the greatest rivalry in NHL history? I just put that on, so you uh, you should be able to see that now, so anybody coming in can at least know what we're talking about. All right, so here we go. When it comes to NHL history, there is just no lack of bad blood between lots of different teams. And the topic we're going to dive into tonight on Puck Drop is, what is the greatest NHL rivalry in the history of the sport. Now, here's the wonderful part about this topic. Everyone's going to have a, it's this one, it's that one. It's got to be this, it's got to be that. I have got a list. I've done my research once again on what I consider to be the greatest rivalries in the NHL. And at the end of this episode, we are going to have to land on one. Now, there's a few ways to look at rivalries when you're talking about the NHL. Again, there's local slash regional rivalries. There's national rivalries. There's international rivalries. There are rivalries that just only seem to simmer up up and down very quickly. They're not really rivalries, but they're hot during the time that they're up. We're going to go through a lot of different rivalries tonight. And just so you know, if you're listening to this on the podcast, this is an interactive live simulcast. So I have people commenting. I will always shout them out and say what they're thinking to keep them in part of the conversation. My name is Leo Elias. I am your host here at Puck Drop Live. We are simulcast here on We Live Hockey, Elimination Cafe, and Hockey Wraparound. We are glad that you're joining us. If you're a first-time listener... Thanks for being here. So, again, right off the bat, I asked the question, what's the greatest rivalry in sports? Before we dive into the research, I've got people commenting already. 
Uh, let's go here. Jeff Jeff Hostack says, Devils-Rangers rivalry doesn't feel like a true rivalry anymore. Devils-Flyers, there's something of a rivalry, but it doesn't quite feel the same as yesteryear. And we'll get into that because uh, those rivalries depend on when you were born, when you watched the game, and sometimes what's going on in the game today. Um, Ray Carcillo says, good friend of mine who also does uh, NHL Live, will be doing that right after this uh, broadcast. Uh, Devils Rangers is not the best historically, but best of the 90s. Ray, we'll, we'll discuss that more. So again, while I'm talking tonight, please feel free to comment what you think the best rivalry is or comment on the information that I'm talking about, and uh, I'll be happy to to comment as we go or at the end here. Okay, so um, the first... First one we have to start with is one that's been hot in the NHL this past season, which is the Battle of Alberta. And that's the Edmonton Oilers versus the Calgary Flames. Okay, Now, this is one of those rivalries that in the 80s was raging, just raging. It was talked about. It was known. Uh, the Oilers and the Calgary Flames met, I believe, five times in the 1980s in the playoffs. Um, the Oilers won all but one of them, and it really culminated in 1986 when Steve Smith on the Edmonton Oilers scored a goal on his own net in Game 7 in a game they lost 4-3 to to the Calgary Flames. Uh, Calgary did not win the Cup that year. That would be a young Patrick Waugh, an unknown rookie for the Montreal Canadiens. Uh, but the the uh, Flames would win a Cup in 1989, led by Lanny McDonald. And this rivalry kind of ended in 1991, which I think was the last time those two teams really met hard in the playoffs. But recently, with Zach Cassian and Kachuk, uh, things have been picking up again. There's been fighting again. In fact, the announcer for the uh, Calgary Flames, or it was the Oilers, was screaming about how this is the Battle of Alberta after 30 years it's back. So here's a rivalry that existed in the 80s, which was raging, cooled off for 25 years, and all of a sudden is back. <laughs> but the Battle of Alberta is a well-known one, but it, it exists. It's one of the ones that count, um, and, and it's one I had to mention. Now, the next one um, is an original six rivalry. All right, and it is the Montreal Canadiens versus the Toronto Maple Leafs. Now, this is one of those rivalries that today you think, oh, okay, yeah, I can see this rivalry there. But you got to remember, these two teams have played 800 plus games against each other since the NHL began. Uh, now, this is the problem why it's not a huge rivalry today. During the original six era, they played each other all the time. It was nonstop. You never know who was going to win the series, even though Montreal has the edge. Uh, the last time these two met in the playoffs was 1979. So probably most of the people listening to the show uh, have not seen these two teams uh, go at it with each other. But if you were alive, you know, in the 60 years prior to that, you're you're gonna you're gonna remember these rivalries. And again, you, when you see the old NHL films or the old Stanley Cup films, you you see these two teams go at it quite a bit. And in the original six era, these teams are not too far away from each other, not too far away from each other now. But uh, when you look at travel at that time period, they were pretty pretty darn close. Um, moving down the line a little bit more, another original six matchup, the Chicago Blackhawks and the Detroit Red Wings. Now, this is another 800-plus game rivalry, um, but it cooled off in 2013. What I remember about this rivalry outside the, the original six time period when these two teams were going at it from time to time was that Chicago really needed to kind of get over the hump and beat Detroit before they won a Stanley Cup. And I remember when, when Chicago won the Cup in 2010, uh, Detroit was a team they had to get past. They did, and they won. So that was the last time I remember this rivalry being big. I remember for the five years prior to that, uh, when Chicago was kind of coming back to life, they just couldn't get past Detroit. And Detroit was clearly the team they had to beat. It's funny to think about Detroit in that way today when they're the worst team in the league. But at that time, Detroit was the toast of the town in the NHL. They were... They were still in the midst of a, a several cup run over the last 10 years prior, 15 years prior. Um, and when the Hawks beat them, ironically, that really was the start of the end for Detroit. So when Chicago beat them in 2013, that was the last time they met in the playoffs. Uh, Chicago would on, go on to have a few more cups uh, before both teams cooled off dramatically. So while Blackhawks and Red Wings is not a major rivalry now, really at the 2005 to 2015 time period, that 10-year era, uh, these two teams really were two great teams that were going at it, and, and the scale tipped, and Chicago went on with it. And again, this is how quickly things can cool off. Both those teams are not super powerful right now, but what's cool for the fans is when they play each other, I bet you there's a little bit more of the uh, more of the anger that people realize. It's probably big for the fans. Um, all right, now next, now before I get to the next section here, let's look at some of the comments because we already, <laughs> we've already got a ton of these things. So Pat Clark says, Pens, Flyers, let's go Pens. That'll be one we talk about in a little bit. Uh, Penn's Caps has been 
better, though, as of late. We'll talk about that for sure. Chicago, Detroit, Pat Silva says that's his. Uh, Sharpsex says original six mass-ups, Boston and Matt Montreal. That's absolutely one we're going to be talking about here today. Uh, Ray says Chicago, Detroit, or Boston, Montreal. It's got to be an original six for best all time. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm leaning that way with my decision. I do have a decision on this. Um, but it has to be something that's endured the time. So, like, Chicago and Detroit is just not powerful right now, and, and that's the truth. And it wasn't powerful. Chicago was bad for a long time. So, you know, when I say the best rivalry, it's a great rivalry. It's a great rivalry. You know, most of these rivalries, every one of these rivalries I'm talking about is great, right? But we're talking about the best of all time, so it's great. Uh, Jeff Dwyer says he has a lot of them. Rangers, Isles, Habs, Leafs, Habs, Bruins, Wings, Leafs. Those are all, all big ones as well. Uh, Mark Polly Pollard, all the way from Australia, says, Good morning, Lee. Good evening, Mark. Glad to have you here. He also says, uh, Avs and Wings, a rivalry we will talk about. Uh, if you're a fan of those two teams, you have that one in your hearts. Um, let's see. Uh, Christina Mark Crush wants to know if I've ever been on the tee during a Bruins Montreal game. I have no desire to go on Boston's mass transit at all during a rivalry game. I've done that in New York a few times. It's not fun. Uh, Ray wants to know if Toronto is still around. I thought they were contracted if they lost to a Zamboni driver. Uh, that's definitely something that's going to make it into Elimination Cafe this year, but uh, absolutely something to talk about. That was a, a, a interesting night, and I'll tell you why a little bit later. Um, let's go. Uh, Sharp Shack says, yeah, that was a uh, SHIT show, and talking back to Christina, uh, and then we're going to keep going here. So, yeah, keep commenting. I'll, I'll stop every once in a while. I'll make sure that I... I jump on there and talk to you. So, so now we're going to get into some regional matchups here. Now, some of these matchups are are really heated, and I think on a national stage sometimes they get attention. But if you're in these areas, these are the biggest rivalries to you. Now we have to talk about this: the old Atlantic Division, or half of the Metropolitan Division. Something that's unique about growing up in the area that I grew up in, which is the Philadelphia, New Jersey, New York area. So I spent the first 30 years of my life, nah, sorry, 25 years of my life in either Philadelphia, New Jersey, or New York City. Um, and what's really unique about that area is that you have a lot of sports teams in a very compacted space. Now, I'm not going to talk about every sport team from every sport. Because it's amazing how many there are. But if we look just at hockey, you start up in New York. The New York Rangers are one train stop from the New Jersey Devils. The New York Rangers are just a, a short drive, if there's no traffic, to Long Island to play the Islanders. The Devils are in the same boat. The Philadelphia Flyers are no more than two hours away from all three of those teams. So when you have a power keg like that, all right, and all these teams are so close. There's a lot of hatred, there's a lot of people, and there's a lot of bad blood between these teams. Now, when I look at that old Atlantic division or the teams that we're talking about, which is the Devils, the Flyers, the Islanders, and the Rangers, okay, I do not put Pittsburgh in that just because they're, they're, they're about five, six hours away from those teams, respectively. It does not mean they're not a rival, but it's just not the same. You know, they were always the team across the state, all right? But when you look at those four teams, the, 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 the biggest rivalry bef between the four of them, all right, no doubt is Islanders versus Rangers or Rangers versus Islanders because I don't want to upset any of those fans because they can't handle when people do that. So the battle for New York, okay, forgive us Buffalo, you don't count in this one. Uh, really, it started in the, the late 80s. I mean, in, in, or sorry, the early 80s. In 1981 to 1984, the Islanders beat the Rangers every single one of those years in the playoffs. Um, and the Rangers surprisingly beat the Islanders in 1994. Uh, they were not surprisingly to win the Stanley Cup. But that cemented the rivalry. And what's funny about this rivalry is these two teams have fluctuated heavily on who's good, who's bad. You know, who's winning, who's losing. It's, it's actually rare that both teams are really good at the same time. Uh, I know we have some people from the area listening. It, it is rare. They, they're not usually good at the same time. But when they are, it is on fire. It is a fiery matchup. Now, here's the funny thing about this matchup, too. Things like Potvin sucks and Rangers sucks, which are chants that are very popular at both teams' arenas. Whether they're playing the Rangers, Islanders, or not. Again, whether they're playing the team or not, they'll shout these things out. Right? Um, is that that endures all the time. So, you know, Islanders love ribbing the Rangers fans when they're down and vice versa. Um, again, the Islanders have the advantage on this matchup all time, but it's an interesting matchup when you look at that kind of old division. Now, I'm going to quickly go through these other ones in the division. The Rangers versus Devils, which is the Battle of the Hudson, uh, which, again, rages when both teams are good. Obviously, in that 1994-1995 period was probably the peak of that in terms of the teams tra trading Stanley Cups. 
Um, you remember the Rangers won in 94 and the Devils won it right away in 95. Um, but again, that, that's one of those, it's, they're so close. They can't not hate each other. I mean, Newark, New Jersey, where the, where the devils play, uh, literally is only a small city because it's next to New York. If you ever been to Newark, it's actually not a small city when compared to other cities, but compared, you know, it literally is in the shadow in the morning when the sun comes up, Newark is in the shadow of New York city. That's legit how it goes. So the Devils have always thrived on their Napoleonic complex to the point that they argue that they don't have a Napoleonic complex, which is absolutely true. They do. Um, but it's a fun rivalry. And, and you know, it's very much the, the big city, the big empire versus the little engine that could. Um, sometimes the little engine wins. Sometimes the big city wins. But it's fun to watch. Um, the next one is the Battle of the Turnpikes. For those of you who don't know what that is, that's Flyers Devils. Now, this was actually my biggest rivalry when I was growing up, which is funny because when I talk to younger Flyers fans, they don't they, they don't see the Devils the same way that I do uh, from my, my youth. All right, when I was growing up, the Devils were always the team to beat. The Devils were always the team that were beating the flower, Flyers. The Flowers. Wow, I'm gonna pay for that one later. The Devils were always the team that were beating the Flyers. Um, my I always say my childhood officially ended in 2000 when Scott Stevens destroyed Eric Lindros, a clip that everyone loves to share and show me like I haven't seen it before. It's a clip that I remember well. I always say that was the end of my youth um, in a lot of different ways because that that was punishing. That, that hit hit everyone in Philadelphia, and we knew we weren't going to win the series that year. Um, but uh, Battle of the Turnpikes, uh, a very good rivalry, Flyers and Devils, has not been alive in recent years. Uh, but it's one that I remember, right? Um, the one that's been alive more in recent years is the Penguins and the Flyers. We'll get to that in a minute. And obviously, there's also Rangers and Flyers are a rivalry. Islanders and Devils are a rivalry. And Islanders versus the Flyers are also an, a rivalry. They're not as big as the ones we spoke about. But that I, I like to group all of those together. Like Those four teams just hate each other. <laughs> <laughs> and they're all connected by that, and they're so close together. There are no other teams in the NHL, four teams that are that close, and no two teams are as close in professional sports as the Rangers and the Devils. They are one train stop away from each other. One is in Newark Penn Station, and one is in New York Penn Station. Someone did give me an ex a, 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 a explanation once about why both those stations that are next to each other are called Penn Station. Um, I believe it had something to do with the way they were built, but I, I never liked the fact that they both had the same name. Get your own, get your own name. That's how it goes. All right, going to go back to some of the comments now before I uh, get back to some of these regional matchups. Uh, wow, there's been a lot on here. Okay, uh, what about Boston or Toronto? We will get into those. Um, you could even say that the Rangers-Islanders rivalry started in the late 70s. Rangers beat the Islanders in 79 to get the cup before losing it to Montreal in the final. That's from Ray Carcillo. That's a great point. So, yeah, that, that was definitely one of the first ones. I mean, th th this rivalry has gone on since that, that year. It would be fair, Ray, 1979. Um, Pat Silva, I'm not going to read your comment, but I've heard that at games all the time. Uh, Sherry, ba Shari, yeah, we see your name wrong. Shari Bowman, I'm a Flyers-Penguins girl. Well... That's a good matchup to be, be in forever. Uh, Mark Polly Pollard wants to know, how about the rivalry of WWE Lee versus everybody else? Well, there is no rivalry there, Mark, because WWE Lee is the only five-time champion in We Live Hockey Fantasy Hockey. For those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, we have a uh, very fun fantasy hockey league that goes on during the year. And uh, like some guy named WWE Lee, who's a real jerk, he just can't be wrong, he can't lose, has won more than anybody else. He has won five times uh if you want to join that league let me know next season all right jeff dwyer says round one 2009 pens flyers series was epic yes it was we will get back to that in a minute so some of the other regional rivalries or close rivalries uh kind of like the four teams i spoke about was uh the battle of the qew i'd be remiss if i did not mention that that is the buffalo sabers versus the Toronto Maple Leafs. that is a bigger rivalry than people realize okay so um the the Buffalo Sabres and Toronto Maple Leafs are actually extremely close to each other. That's another one of those short drive type matchups. Um, one of the shortest in the NHL outside of of New York and New Jersey uh, and the Islanders, right? So that's that's a bigger rivalry than people realize. And obviously Buffalo has an Napoleonic complex in that one, um, having never won a cup. Um, but the, you know Toronto is not jumping up to say how many cups they have since they haven't won since 1967. Uh, another one, I, here's one, I'm going to say the name of this. Type to me if you think, if you know which one this is, okay? I'm just going to give you the name of the rivalry. The name of this rivalry is called the Governor's Cup, and it is still existing today. Can anybody tell me who are the two teams in the Governor's Cup, a rivalry that does exist today? 
You have five seconds. While I sip my tea. Five seconds is up. I'm going to assume that none of you know because it's it's not one that people would typically know. The Governor's Cup is the Tampa Bay Lightning versus the Florida Panthers. Um, a rivalry that exists today, but no one talks about because, again, either one of these teams is good, it's usually Tampa, and the other one's not, um, or it's just not something that's talked about outside of Florida. But it does exist, and you can imagine that. They're just across the state from each other. Um, it's a few hours drive, Tampa versus the Florida Panthers. If the Panthers could ever get really good again and really competitive again, this would actually be a great one um, to have. So we'll see what it is. A lot of people saying Minnesota Wild versus Coyotes. That's not it. Uh, Battle of Labatt Blue is more like it. No, it's, it, it's a good game. Wild and Coyotes are not a big rival. The Governor's Cup is Tampa versus Florida. Uh, the next one is the Battle of Ontario, which is Ottawa versus Toronto. Uh, not as, as big as the Battle of Alberta, uh, unfortunately. Um, Ottawa very much the Washington capitals of Canada because they're the capital city of Canada. But, uh, again, another team that has not won a Stanley Cup in their modern incantation. They have actually won... The Ottawa Senators have actually won 11 Stanley Cups prior to their becoming defunct and coming back as the Ottawa Senators years later. Uh, a lot of people don't realize that, but the Ottawa Senators of the past, of the early 1900s, won 11 Stanley Cups, and then they have never won again. It's 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 crazy to think about. Um, okay, and then some of the other local rivals are obviously the battles of California, Anaheim, L.A., Los Angeles, San Jose, San Jose and Anaheim, San Jose and Los Angeles, uh, specifically Los Angeles and Anaheim because those two cities are extremely close. Um, again, this, these are rivalries that were just unbelievable the last 10 years and have completely cooled off this season, completely. All three uh, California teams not in the playoffs with the current standings today, which is incredible. Really think about it. But that's that's one that is humongous uh, in the in the state of California. If you're a hockey fan, especially LA and Anaheim, um, I can imagine the 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 the, the uh, SHIT calling those. Now I I went to a LA and San Jose games in Los Angeles with which with Ray Carcillo, someone who's listening tonight, uh, my best friend, uh, and it was a unbelievably phenomenal environment. I remember a quick made an unbelievable save in that game. I believe this was the year. Uh, LA went to the final. It might have been. It might have been the uh, year they lost. But I'll tell you what. It was uh, they, in the in the conference final. It was an unbelievable game. It was a game seven. Uh, it was everything you could have asked for. It was huge, right? So if you're if you're a West Coast hockey fan, that's your biggest rivalry for sure. Um, now the one I didn't talk about in the Metro Division is the the Battle of Pennsylvania because this one's the second most probably egregious one outside the Islanders and Rangers, but it's definitely more. Uh, fiery right now in recent years than the Islanders and the Rangers. And the Battle of Pennsylvania started in 1967. Both of these teams came in in the next six. They've played over 300 games. Uh, believe it or not, the Flyers have the edge on wins in terms of the overall record, but Pens obviously have the advantage on cups with five cups with the Flyers too. Um, this has always been, uh, so, I mean, I can speak to it as a Flyers fan. Um, Obviously, there's this weird thing where, like, Pennsylvania seems to hate each other. Both sides of Pennsylvania hate each other when it comes to sports, uh, which is funny because some states will root for the other team in their state, especially if you're a college sports fan. Um, if you're an SEC fan, you'll root for other SEC teams. It's just unheard of um, here. And then there's the obvious Sidney Crosby versus the Flyers fans versus the Flyers. I don't like them attitude. It's a fun rivalry, and it's a bitter rivalry. Um, there's not any love between these two teams, and I dare to say there's not too much respect. Now, I did have a chance to interview uh, Chris Letang of the Penguins, and I told him I'm a Flyers fan. I grew up a Flyers fan. You know, what does that rivalry mean to you? And, and you know, he had said that you know it's matured over the years. You know, when when the Pens were winning their cups, it was dirty. It was just a dirty series. You were going to leave that series injured, and they knew it, and that's what it would take to win. Um, but he says in recent years it's it's become more hockey. It's become less bruiser and more hockey, and the, the respect level has built there a bit. And you get up for those games, right? That and I like the way of saying that there's a maturity to it, right? It's evolved, um, but it's one that's still very much alive today. In fact, in the standings, the Penguins and the Flyers are right next to each other. Um, so you know, should the season continue, this is going to be a really fun one to watch. But uh, yeah, it, it's raged on. I, it's not looking like it's going to calm down anytime soon. Um, I do remember uh, at the turn of the century, the Penguins got really, really bad, and this thing was quiet. Um, prior to 2005-06, kind of when 
Crosby came into the organization. I mean, the Penguins, a lot of people don't know this, but the Penguins were in danger of being relocated. That's how bad they were. Um, Lemieux really swept in as the owner to save the team. Um, and Crosby obviously fortified that. And once they won some cups again, it, it turned on. But I've always, I've always said this, you know, and, and, and I'm going to, I'm going to be a little bit of a homer here, but Flyers fans have never, never stopped going to Flyers games. Uh, I was a little disappointed in Pittsburgh Penguins fans uh, at that time period because the team went under, they weren't supporting the team, which is really unforgivable. I mean, every year the Flyers have been bad. People support the team uh, no matter what they put us through. And all of this gave birth to Gritty. Uh, you know, Pittsburgh, it's your fault. You know, you you had to make fun of him the day he was born, and now he's the greatest mascot in all of hockey because the Fanatic is the greatest mascot in all of sports. Uh, we have both of them here in Philadelphia. No, Everybody agrees Gritty is the greatest thing that happened in hockey last season outside the Blues winning the Stanley Cup, which was pretty awesome. I'm not going to lie. But, um, yeah, uh, an amazing rivalry, the Battle of Pennsylvania Flyers versus Pittsburgh Penguins, okay? Um, another rivalry with the Flyers is the Flyers and Bruins, right? And this is one of those, again, spot rivalries that kind of flares up and cools off depending on what time period it is. Now, in the 1970s, the Big Bad Bruins versus the Broad Street Bullies was, in my opinion, the greatest rivalry in the NHL if you think about the NHL of that time. It's a, it's a big, tough league at this time. The, the Bruins gave birth to the Flyers because they used to beat up the Flyers, so the Flyers said we're not going to take any of this um, and we're going to build a tough team. That's why the Broad Street Bullies were built. The Flyers beat the Bruins in 1974 to win their first cup. Um, the Bruins also won cups in the 70s. So this is one of those those two teams, uh, you know, that, w that must have been a war, a bloody war and mess in the 1970s. Now you fast forward to recent years, um, in 2010, I mean, there's some history here now with these two teams. You know, the Flyers, uh, one of the one of the only teams to come back from a three nothing deficit to win a playoff series. They went to the Cup final that year and lost to Chicago. The following year, the Bruins swept the Flyers in the playoffs and went on to win the Stanley Cup over Vancouver. So, uh, these two teams are kind of tied together through NHL history, um, through eras of NHL history. But it's uh, it's one of those things of. I, I don't. When I think of the Bruins when we're playing them, I'm like, oh, we're playing the Bees tonight. But if we're not playing them, I'm not thinking about them, right? Like I'm thinking about, I'm looking at the Rangers and the Islanders and all the other teams most of the time. The teams in my division. That's one of the things that kind of keeps this from being the, one of the best. But it is fun to watch. Um, I think that's a good question and a good thought as well. Is you know, what when you think of a rivalry, it's could you watch this game every time they play, right? Um, you know, Penguins versus Caps is one of those games, and that's the next one we're going to talk about. Um, Pens versus Caps started in 1974, um, and Pittsburgh has a massive win advantage in this series. Okay, when it when you come to regular season games and playoff games, Pittsburgh it's it's not a contest who's better. Pittsburgh has the edge on this. Um, in fact, Washington's only won two postseason contests against the Penguins in their history. One of them resulting in obviously the 2018 Stanley Cup Final, where the uh, Capitals won. Um, but obviously in recent years, the biggest part of this rivalry has been Ovechkin and Crosby just going at it, the two greatest players in the game. And I think that that's what solidified this even as a rivalry. Because again, I wouldn't have considered this a rivalry really prior to Ovechkin and Crosby because the Caps just kept getting beat. I was more of like, a, a again, a, a stepping stone for the Capitals. They always seem to have to beat the Penguins to kind of get to the next level. Um, but the, the, the addition of Crosby versus Ovechkin, if you want to call it that, and the mutual respect that those two players have for each other, which is clearly obvious, um, has always made this something fun to watch. And I'll never forget, obviously, uh, the I believe it was the 2009 it's 2008 or 2009 playoffs where Crosby and, and Ovechkin had dueling hat tricks in the in the game, and that was just that solidified that this is these are the greatest players in the world, and they're going full force for us tonight. I mean, that was an iconic hockey game in the history of the NHL. I also remember that game because I got my brother tickets to that game. He lived in Washington uh, at the time. And um, we, I got him tickets to that game thinking, oh, this will be a good game. It turned out to be one of the, probably the best games of the last 50 years in the NHL. And most people uh, don't disagree with that. Uh, Caitlin, I see you're, you're blinking, man. If you're talking about gritty, I think you're talking about how I say gritty isn't their fault. Uh, now, here's the thing about this. We're talking about Pittsburgh and the, the birth of gritty. Uh, gritty was very, 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 very much in danger with the Philadelphia fan base until the Pittsburgh Penguins made a comment on Twitter, and then that's when everybody went, whoa, 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 whoa. You can't talk about Gritty like that. He's ours. 
That's what I'm talking about when you say he gave birth. They gave us an assist on getting him over. Okay, I got two more. Two more rivalries to talk about. Next one, uh, Mark Pollard, you've been waiting for this. Colorado Avalanche, Detroit Red Wings. Now, this was, in my life, the most heated rivalry when it was hot. It has since cooled off dramatically. But from 1995 to 2003, these teams combined for two cups. I'm sorry, for five cups each. I'm, I'm sorry, five cups overall. They each won together. They won five cups from 1995 to 2003. And they met five times in the playoffs. And every one of those matchups was an absolute war. Blood, fights, bad blood, massive injuries, turtling players, documentaries have been made about it um you know when you talk about 1996 with you know, claude lemieux and chris draper and then the next year mccarty starting a fight with lemieux and then there was a goalie fight uh two goalie fights right waffa but osgood and fought vernon uh in respective years backwards right um so in that time period in that kind of like eight year time period that was the hottest rivalry of the league um, they were two really good teams, really good. I mean, you're talking about Iserman, Joe Sackick. I mean, I can go on forever. Ray Bork. I mean, there's so many names. Forsberg, Wah, <laughs> Osgood, Vernon. I, I mean, I could keep going on for a while. Uh, Lemieux, too. Lemieux won a, a, a Conn Smythe uh, in 1996 when they won the uh, Stanley Cup, the, the Avalanche. Talk about a short period of time. It was the greatest rivalry I saw over a short period of time in, in late 90s hockey. And, and I think that's another big point of this. This is the Neanderthal era of the NHL. Uh, it's a time period where big bodies and toughness were still very much apparent, and skill was not probably the most celebrated thing in the game at this time. Uh, to, to win the cup at this time, you had to be tough as hell, and those two teams were tough as hell, and they traded back and forth. Uh, Detroit has a slight advantage, slight advantage in that time period, um, but I, I'm going to call it a draw in, 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 in terms of the toughness of those two teams. Um, now, this cooled off after 2001. When, when the Avs won the Cup in 2001, Detroit saw another era, era of dominance about 10 years after that uh, or less, uh, but since then it has not held the same egregiousness, if you will, for the teams um, as it probably does for the fans. And I think the teams will tell you that. I'm sure they get up when they're playing each other. Keep in mind, too, they're not, they're not even in the same conference anymore. That divisional realignment really probably hurt that a lot. Um, but it, for the fans, I know it's, it's a thing, but it's not a rivalry anymore. Uh, and like that's what I said. This one burnt fast and it burnt hard, but the flame is out. Uh, nobody really thinks about that as a major rivalry in the NHL today, but it has its place in NHL lore. Now, the, the last rivalry I'm going to talk about uh, is probably the most obvious one if you've been watching hockey for a long time, and that is the Boston Bruins versus the Montreal Canadiens. Now, to give you an idea of the history behind this and why this is going to essentially be impossible to beat, I'm going to tell you that right now, is these two teams have played each other more in regular season play and postseason play than any two other teams in the NHL's history, right? So these guys, these teams have hit each other more, seen each other more, and done more to each other over the course of the NHL 100-plus years than any other team. Uh, Montreal has the advantage. The, the, the record, I have this written down, the record all-time, Montreal has the advantage with a record of uh, 363... <laughs> 274, so 363 loss, wins, 274 losses, 103 ties, and 10 shootout losses, okay? Um, and people have compared this with Yankees versus Red Sox, all right? Anytime you're comparing any rivalry with Yankees, Red Sox, which is probably the biggest rivalry in all of sports, at least American sports, North American sports, um, you're talking about the best rivalries of all time. Um, you know, the key moment of this rivalry, and there's so many between these two teams, even if they haven't happened in recent years, uh, the key moment is 1955, and it's the Maurice uh, Richard riots. Um, and what happened was, that, again, this is like the layman's explanation, but um, in a game, Richard was hit in the head, cracked his head open, got, got the head soda, uh, you know, went, retaliated, chopped the guy with his hockey stick, because this happened. Then one of the officials was holding him. Richard got punched. So Richard pushed the guy off and knocked the official out. And I mean knocked him out cold on the ice. So the NHL fined Richard, even though you know what he did was wrong, but he was being held back. It was, it was a massive controversy. Um, you know, they, they, none of this should have happened in the first place. Um, 
They fined Richard and they suspended him for the rest of the season. And Montreal literally rioted. They literally rioted in the streets over this um, to the point that Richard had to come on the radio and ask them to calm down. Um, there's not many NHL rivalries that spawn something like that. And again, this happened 60, 70 years ago, 1955, right? So um, 70, it was 65 years ago. I mean, th think about that for a minute, right? And, and it was a major moment in NHL history. Uh, these two teams have bad blood in history. And I think that whenever they play each other, it's almost always a nationally televised game, and it's almost always a game you should watch. All right. Now, again, when we look through all, you need to start commenting. Now, I'm going to start reading them. Uh, I think Boston Bruins versus Montreal Canadiens is the hands down obvious greatest rivalry of all time in the NHL. If you disagree with me, feel free to to, to comment. But in terms of the all time rivalry, it's Boston Bruins Montreal Canadiens. I'm going to say this again: the hottest rivalry for a short period of time was probably Colorado and Detroit. Um, I'll give it that title, but it's not the best rivalry of all time. It was the best rivalry from 1995 to 2003. Um, you have to group together the entire, uh, the old Atlantic Division minus Pittsburgh as its own rivalry. The, the amount of bad blood between these four teams, again, Rangers, the Devils, the Flyers, and the Islanders, is it's, it's unpr I, don't, I don't know any other place that exists in hockey. I know it exists in other sports, right? Um, you, you know, but I, I actually don't know if it's, you know, I think hockey might have the most exclusive relationship because they're all in the same division. In baseball, those teams are not in the same division. Some of them are, but so they're not all four. In football, they're not all. So again, some of them are. And then in basketball, uh, you know, there, there's not as many teams, right? So, I mean, the Nets moved to Brooklyn. I mean, you know, the Knicks and the Nets and the, and the Sixers maybe, but, I mean, the, when you get the Celtics into that, it's a totally different thing. Um uh, you know, th so those are like a special rivalry. And again, I think you can group in the California group as well with that. Um, and then the Battle of Alberta is raging again. But again, that's one that heated up, cooled off, heated up, cooled off. And uh, again, the Blackhawks and the Red Wings was a great rivalry too, but uh, more of more of getting over the hump. But here's where we go. I want to know what you think. Do you agree with what I'm saying? Is Boston Bruins, Montreal Canadiens the greatest rivalry of all time? Were there any stats that you didn't know tonight or any stats that you found interesting that I spoke about? And if not any of the ones I've mentioned, what's a rivalry that I didn't mention or one that you love personally and why? Uh, now, this is the point where I go back and scroll through all the comments. And I'm looking, I'm going back to this where everybody thought that Minnesota and the Coyotes were the Nurse Cup. Um, here we go. Andrew Williams says, I'm a Coyotes fan. I can tell you we don't care about the Wild. We care more about the Jets of the Blackhawks from the Central, but L.A. and Arizona are bigger rivalries that go across all sports. Um, yeah, the, like, you know, the thing with the, the Coyotes, it, I mean, you're so secluded from, you know, and the, this is not just the Coyotes. This is the entire Western kind of the country. Teams are so far away from each other. I, I think rivalries are born by what happens in games, right? It's not a territorial thing as much as it's history with other teams. Um, I can see uh, you know, L.A. being a big uh, rival for the Arizona teams. I mean, you guys play each other in the desert sometimes, um, so forth and so on. Pat Silva wants to know why the Tampa Bay Lightning versus Florida Panthers is called the Governor's Cup. I'm going to guess that the governor of Florida created that. And, you know, if you think about Florida, that name makes sense. It does. I mean, it's just, it's silly like Florida, um, you know, in, in a lot of ways. And I love Florida. At least I lived in Florida for three years, so I can say that. But that's just a very Florida thing. Ray Carcillo says, King Sharks, King's Ducks is huge out there. Um, I, I imagine Sharks, Ducks as well. I, those California teams. You know, there was a time, remember this, that all three of those teams, uh, I think over a 15-year period, all three of them made it to a and two of them won in a final. And, the, the, you know, the, remember the Kings did it twice. So there was a time where uh, the Kings were the first – uh, team, I believe, I'm sorry, the Ducks were the first team in California to win a cup, if I'm not mistaken. And the, the, the Kings were the first L.A. team to do it, obviously, um, in, in terms of hockey. Uh, and then uh, you know, there was the California Golden Seals at one point. But, yeah, California hockey was huge for a while. Um, let's keep going here. Ray says it was 2013. That's when we were there together. Yeah, actually, that makes sense because my son was born the next year. Uh, Kings lost next round to Chicago, but went to game seven, round two. Kings beat the Sharks two to one. It was a great game. That was a great game. I got to see that in person. That's when I was really introduced to California hockey. And I realized that, man, this fan base is just as awesome as anywhere else. Uh, Jeff Dwyer wants you all to know that the Bruins suck. Uh, Jeff Dwyer, a good friend, but a confused hockey friend, likes the Rangers and the Carolina Hurricanes. 
Uh, that's because he's been displaced and he lives in Carolina now. He's a very, very dedicated Carolina Hurricanes fan right now, known as the Kilted Caniac. You can see him on game nights if you go to the games. Um, he's a staple in that town now. He's really made a name for himself. Grew up a Rangers fan, but uh, has been adopted by his Carolina brethren and sisterhood as one of the Caniacs right there, Jeff Dwyer. Uh, why do you hate the Bruins? Is that just because your Rangers passed or not? Uh, Caitlin, again, talking about Gritty. Yeah, Pittsburgh was the reason Gritty was born, believe it or not, in terms of coming to prominence. Um, I have some of the people in the chat here talking that there's going to be new rivalries made from this chat. Uh, Sharp Shack wants to remind everyone that Claude Lemieux turtled during that fight with McCarty, which is true. He has selfly admitted that, and he has actually been up on stage with McCarty saying that's one of the biggest mistakes he ever made. Um Let's keep going here. Uh, uh, Mark Polly Pollard says, Fopa, who is, is Peter Forsberg, greatest player of the 90s. Uh, so, yeah, one of the other topics that was potential for this week was who is the greatest player of the 1990s. Mark, I do not agree with you. Um, Peter Forsberg is a great player in the top 10 of that list, but he is not the greatest player of the 1990s. Um, I will... I know who my player is for the best player of the 1990s, and it's going to be very hard for anyone to deny me that I'm right. For those of you who know me, that's not uncommon. Um, oh, no, it's kidding. Um, but I'll tell you this. The name is not Gretzky, and the name is not Lemieux. If you really want to know, I'll tell you tonight, but you got to comment below that you want me to tell you who I think it is. Um, let's keep going. Can't stand both teams. This is Jeff Dwyer, but I always enjoy watching these, these teams play. I guess you're watching, talking about Buffalo. I'm sorry, Boston and Montreal. Let's keep going here. Um, uh, yeah, Andrew Williams says Rask has a hard time beating the Habs. Rask has a hard time... Winning the cup, I don't know how else to say that. Tim Thomas won it for him in 2011, and Rask has lost twice. It's tough. I'm not making fun of the guy. That hurts. Um, and they're on they're on pace again to be a great team this year. So we'll see what's just going to happen here. Uh, Mark Pollard says, just want to thank you, Lee, and everyone in here have been having a hard time lately, and this page and the lives on here helped uh, on here help me take my mind away. Hey, Mark, hey, that's that's a real compliment, buddy, and I really appreciate that. Um, it goes both ways, you know. Uh, I do these videos not, not just for, for you know, you, but I do them for me too. I'm being honest with you. I take a lot of pride in the fact I get to interact with you. It takes me away from my life for an hour um, each week. I love talking about hockey. I love it, all right? I love discussing this stuff with you. I love the game. You, those of you who know me and what I do for a living, surrounded by the game all the time. Um, so I want to thank you all as well for listening. You know, I know we're all going this. Again, this is a month in now to what we're dealing with outside of hockey. Um, and, uh, I know, I know we, we all go up and down. I'll tell you this, you know, I go up and down with it. There's some days I'm, I'm good and I'm focused and taking care of my kids and everything. Great, and then some days I'm just not feeling it. <laughs> and I know some of you out there, most days are like that. You know, I'm, I'm very fortunate to be in a position where uh, I can be creative and I can, I can do things like this. And I know that's not everybody. So stay strong, continue to do what you're doing. This will end. It looks like progress is being made from everything that I'm reading. Uh, we will get out of this, and it'll, it'll be a memory one day. We'll talk about this as a memory one day, and hopefully how a team won the Stanley Cup in the summer. Um, let's keep going here. Jeff Dwyer says, Crabs versus Rats is the best rival. Yeah, that's, that, are you talking Tampa Bay and Florida? Florida who have the Raps? Yeah. Ray Carcillo says he agrees Montreal-Boston is the greatest rivalry in NHL history. Thank you, Ray. Thank you. You've always had my back. I appreciate it. Caitlin Elizabeth also likes it. She agrees. Uh, Caitlin Elizabeth, again, Caitlin uh, Reese. Uh, so she's a newer hockey fan and a very dedicated hockey fan. She's here every single week. She works with us at We Love Hockey. Uh, her her passion for this game is infectious, and she's only been watching the game for just over a year, if I'm not mistaken, Caitlin. Um, and I I know her. I know her. Now that I've told her and now that she's watched this, she's going to watch every Bruins and Montreal Canadiens game that's on moving forward and hopefully some in the past because they are uh, a great rivalry. You could probably find a documentary about that. Sharp Shack says, the fact that the Habs took Claude off the Bruins' hands was amazing. Thank you, Canada. That's a good point that the Montreal Canadiens <laughs> took Claude from, from the Bruins, and uh, it's, that is pretty funny. So uh, Christian R Miranda says, not saying it's the greatest rivalry or anything, but California has got some great hit between the three teams. Yeah, totally, totally agree. We definitely discussed that tonight. Um, it's a fun little, little matchup between San Jose, L.A., and Anaheim. Um, and, you know, I think a lot of people just don't take it too seriously because it was California, but the last 10 years have erased that. Um, I mean, those teams have definitely shown that they are worth their while, uh, in including 2007, uh, or two, uh, seven, 2007 when the Ducks won, yeah. Um, totally has 
claim their place as hockey places. In fact, it hurts me that none of those teams are really succeeding right now. Um, and that's that's a that's a tough one for me because they, they were all three of them were in the playoffs. I think just just last year or the year before. So that hurts a little bit. Um, Jeff Dwyer wants you all to know he still loves his New York Rangers and his Bruins hatred comes from back then. But he is a massive, massive fan of the uh, Carolina Hurricanes right now. Uh, Pat Silva has guessed that Lindros is my top player of the 1990s. I love Eric Lindros. He is absolutely a top 10 player from that era. Easily the most dominant player of that era. Not the best player of the 1990s. Still not my number one. My number one, is, when I say it, is an obvious pick. And it is, a, it, it is again, hard to deny that, that my thinking is wrong on that one. Uh, Jeff Dwyer said the fan base last year left a bad taste in many Kaniacs, Kaniac fans. Are you talking about Boston? Uh, are you talking about be, – be specific, Jeff. Type. Help me out here, man. Uh, Sharp Shack has guessed Paul Correa. Great player. Would be on my top ten list. <laughs> but he's not the number one player of the 1990s. Mark Polly Pollard. Is it Patrick Waugh? Great player. Would make my top ten. Not one of the greatest players of the 1990s. Not the greatest player of the 1990s. No. Um, uh, okay, Jeff says that the Crabs are the Habs and the Rats are the Bruins. Well, J- Jeff, that's just not historically correct in hockey. The Rats would definitely be the the, the, the uh, Florida Panthers. They throw rats on the ice, right? Um, we can debate that another time. All right. Uh, Mark Pollard says, but there's a new rivalry that is between myself and this Caitlin lady. It's on like Donkey Kong laughing my ass off. Well, I'm going to let you two converse because that's Australia versus Pennsylvania, Ben Salem versus Victoria. I remembered that, Mark. Who will win the match of the opposite seasons? Who will win? Who has the better accent during the springtime and the fall and the summer and the other season that's eluding me right now? The winter, the most obvious season of all. We'll find out next time on this show. Peter Beard, Parker Beard, excuse me. How have you been holding up? I've been trying to stay positive and not stress out about this. Well, uh, Parker, I'll talk about that for a minute. I have a very uh, key and core set of philosophies that kind of govern my thinking, right? And uh, I'll I'll briefly give you them very quickly. One is I do not focus on things I cannot control. So I cannot control what's happening in the world right now. So I do not focus on the problem too much. I do focus on the solution and what I have to do to make sure that I and others don't get sick, um, including my children. But in terms of what's happening in the world, I don't, I don't control it, so I can't focus too much on it. What I do control is my output, my effort, and how I can emotionally respond to each and every day. So I try and focus on that. Uh, the second thing that governs me, and this is one that's really uh, I've, had to, I've had to really meditate with um, the last 30 days is I, I, I try and live in the moment, right? So what I mean by that is I'm not worried about tomorrow. I'm not worried about yesterday. I reflect and I look to those days, but I don't live in those days. I live in the moment. I live in the now. Uh, and this is something that I adopted when I played sports, when I coach sports, when I do business, no matter what, what it is. Um, so, you know, I hear a lot of people out there a lot, not, not just one or two about when this ends, or I hope this ends. And I have not adopted that attitude. I do hope it ends as soon as possible. I don't want you to think that, um, you know, I'm not I'm not hopeful for that. I'm not focused on that at all. Uh, it will end when it ends, right? Uh, what I'm focused on is today, right now. In fact, this moment, this conversation I'm having with you and everyone listening, this podcast, this video is literally right now. This is my, my world right now. This is what I'm living in right now. When I'm downstairs with my children, that's my world. When I'm with my wife, that's my world. Um, you know, when Travis and I are working together, that's it. I'm focused on the moment completely because any time I spend anywhere but that moment is, is largely a waste of time to me in, in the sense of if I'm not here in the now and I'm not only focused on the things I can control, what am I doing, right? Um, because I can't change the things I can't control or I can't affect the things I can't control and I cannot make the future or the past get any closer to me than the moment. So um, any time spent in those other places is a waste of time to me. It's, it's my philosophy. Right? There's other people out there that don't, don't agree with that. And that's how I go to it. Um, and the way I think about it is this. I'd say nine times out of ten times I'm frustrated. Probably ten out of ten. <laughs> uh, I'm frustrated or I'm upset or I'm feeling an emotion that's not pleasant. My, my brain is usually somewhere else. It's usually in the future or the past. Thinking about something that happened or worried about something that hasn't happened yet. 
uh, and it's about something I can't control. So that's how I get through this. Uh, and yeah, it's been 31 days. Uh, and again, I have highs and lows with it like like the rest of you. I don't want you to think I'm just bubbly and jumping up and down all the time. I know a lot of people think that I'm like that. Um, I am an optimist and I am I am blessed to, to be in a good situation most of the time. But um, I'm fortunate and I'm very aware of that. But, but like I said, we're all going through this together, right? We all got to be there for each other. So deep question, deep answer. I hope that gave you some insight into how my brain works. Uh, all right, Mark Pollard replying to Caitlin. Don't worry about that. You have to go find the Avs, Wings games. It's great watching. Make sure to have some popcorn too. Caitlin, Mark's not wrong. You should probably watch a documentary or just some highlights from those uh, Colorado and Detroit games. They they were pretty pretty heated, uh, and they're a little more modern than probably the Boston and the Habs games. But, uh, yeah, if you're looking for some good 90s watching, definitely check out the Colorado-Detroit matchup. Um, let's keep going here. Sharp Shack has guessed Sergei Fedorov. Great player. Definitely makes my top 10. Not the best players of the 90s. I can't believe that no one has guessed this yet. Ray Carcillos. Uh, I'm going to read your whole comment. God, I hate to say it, but is it Brodor? No. <laughs> no. In fact, uh, uh, remember, Brodor only played half the 90s. My player played nine of the 10 seasons in the 1990s, okay? Um, Brodor is a great goaltender. Uh, I'd probably give him... Uh, he's probably the best player, one of the best players, 95 to 2005. I think that's a fair statement to make, but he's not the best player of the 90s. Um, Caitlin says she's already into it. This is what I love about Caitlin. She is completely dedicated to hockey. Um, Parker Beard says, to answer your question, nothing can beat the Bruins-Habs rivalry. Awesome. I'm glad that you agree with that. I got to throw the Habs Leaf as well, and definitely the Pens and the Flyers. Yeah, I could totally see how the, the, the Canadians and Leafs is a big rivalry. Um, uh, but that's, again, that's one of those rivalries where I think that we talked about it right at the beginning, um, that, I, you know, they've played over 800 games together, um, but the last time they met in the playoffs was 1979. So that, that's cooled that off a lot, but that's one of those ones that can start raging again. It's the playoff gods have not seen it fit that they need to meet each other right now. Uh, Jeff Dwyer says, watch the generation when Don Cherry coached the Bruins. Well, that would be a good one. You can see him, uh. You can see him thanking the referees. There's a lot of things in there. Go watch uh, Grapes of Wrath. All of you, if you haven't seen that film, go watch Grapes of Wrath if you can. It's a Canadian film about Don Cherry. If you watch Letterkenny, um, the main character in Letterkenny plays Grapes, plays Don Cherry in that. Uh, please spare any topics about modern Don Cherry. It's not a discussion I want to have tonight. But uh, you should definitely, he is part of hockey history. However you slice it, you should watch that um, if you haven't seen it already. Um, See, Ray Carcillo, this is my best friend, has said that he is living in the moment. He just made fresh brownies. That's the world he's in right now. He, he gets it. He gets it. I know he hears me when I talk. He gets it. Um, let's keep going here. So I'm going through your comments. Uh, Ray, you've had some requests for brownies. Um, <laughs> well, Ray, Ray can't give you brownies, but he can give you NHL 20 live streaming on Twitch. Uh, as he does Wednesday Night Hockey, uh, after I'm done here, Ray jumps on. If you go to his Twitch, screen, Twitch stream, he does live play-by-play -play broadcasting while he plays, and it's phenomenal. It's fun, and it's phenomenal, and he did very well last week. Um, uh, oh, <laughs> so Ray Carcillo comes back, remembering Andrew from previous conversations, and says Diamondbacks fans don't get brownies. Thus, completing the circle of rivalry. A perfect time to bring that up because a rivalry has just been born between two people on my stream here. I love it. I love it. Okay. Hunter, Be Hunter West, excuse me. Which Blackhawk Cup win was the best in your opinion? 10, 13, or 15? Hunter, I need you to define what you mean by best. Are you asking me what was the best team? What was the best win, the most iconic win for them? Um, I need you to go into that a little bit more. Um, tell me what you mean by best, all right? And I'll give you an answer to that. Um, Andrew Williams and Ray, you guys are trading back and forth baseball insults. Uh, we're not talking about baseball here, right? We don't talk about baseball. We don't talk about baseball. You can search that GIF online. Thank you, Caitlin, for that. Um, here we go. Sharp Shack. That was one of my favorite guesses, too. I'm a Wings fan, so I'm naturally going to go out there. Or is it Iserman? No, Iserman. Again, great player. Definitely makes the top 10. You guys are getting the entire top 10. <laughs> Except for number one. I'm going to unveil it at the end of the episode, but it's not Iserman. It's not. Who have you guys said? You've said Iserman, Brodor, Wah, Fedorov. Uh, I mean, you've named a lot of players. 
It's not them. Yeah, Ray says, thank God it's not Brodeur. I would never pick Ray. Lindros is another guess. No, it's not Lindros. John LeClaire. I love John LeClaire. Does not make my top 10. He does make my top 10 personally and one of my favorite players of all time. It is not John LeClaire. It's not it. I cannot believe that none of you have guessed this person. And it just goes to show that he has never been given the rightful amount of credit that he has been due. All right? Uh, and I will name it in a minute. Uh, Jeff Dwyer wants you all to know, if you're going to watch Grapes of Wrath, it is a two-parter. Uh, I don't look at it as a two-parter, Jeff. It's just, it's just there's made two of them. Uh, there's, a, there's a kind of early life and a later life. So yeah, it, it's a sequel. That's what I would say. It's a sequel. Ray Carcello has guessed Mark Messier. No, it's not Messier. Um, another great player. I mean, he was better in the 80s, I think, in terms of, of skill. Um, obviously iconic in 1994. Is it Mike Madano? No. Come on. How has nobody guessed this? It's, I'm, I'm telling you when I say it, you're going to go, oh. I mean, we all agree the best player of the 80s is Wayne Gretzky. I could make an argument that Wayne Gretzky was the best player of the 90s, but I, he's not. He's not. Dave Poole, and that goes back to the 80s. Give me a break. Come on, Dave Poole, and former Flyers captain. All right, all right, guys, we're coming up on an hour here, so you got to guess this player. I am, I'm a little bit upset that no one's guessed this player. I am a little bit upset that no one has guessed who I think is the greatest player of the 90s. And neither Dave Poole, Potvin, Recky. No, no, no. Come on, come on, someone's got to get it. Thank Caitlin Elizabeth, thank you. Coming through in the clutch. Yarmir Yager is the greatest player of the 1990s. He is the great. I don't know how anyone can argue that. Parker Beard says Dominic Hasek, another great player, but no. Yarmir Yager is hands down the greatest player of that decade, easily. Comes into the league 1991, wins two cups back to back. Memorial Mew has to leave the team. He takes over, is an iconic captain, iconic goal scorer, has scored some of the most beautiful goals in the history of the league, ended up captaining the team all the way to the year 2000. He has just retired this past season. He's an ageless wonder, as Brett Brewer has just said. That, I'm getting it. It's, it's Yager, all of you coming in now. Jeffrey Dyer, Lemieux, Yager, Stevens, no. Drew Brewer is laughing because I finally have given it up. Ray, you have said, oh, Yager. That's why he's the best. Exactly. Exactly why he's the best. He's more impressive at 50 than 20. Well, Sharp Track, you must not have watched him at 20 because <laughs> he was unbelievable. Unbelievable. Caitlin says, I know you way too well for me to have gotten that wrong. That's true. All right. I'm a big Yager fan. I am a humongous Yager fan. Let me put it this way. He is the second greatest goal scorer in the history. I'm sorry, point scorer in the history of the league. Of all time. He was not from the Czech Republic, and I believe this. He would be, everyone would have said his name. That's not that you don't like the Czech Republic. I just think that him not being North American has always hurt him a bit in terms of his presence. How many other players have sponsored their own peanut butter brand? No one. Yarmir Yager did it. A pioneer. Before there was Crosby and Malkin, there was Yager. All right? Andrew Williams said he almost played for every NHL team. Yeah, it's like, you know what's funny is the first uh, half of his career he didn't. <clears throat> I need a tea break after shouting about Yager. I can't believe nobody got Yager. All right. Um, the first, you know, from 1991 to 2000, he only played for one, one number one. You got to remember that. Uh, then then he went to the Rangers. Um, then he went to um, – the cap sorry, he went to the Capitals, then he went to the Rangers, and then, then he started playing everywhere. Flyers, Devils, Boston, Dallas, I mean I'm forget Florida. I mean he played it was unbelievable last the last seven years of his career. And teams kept passing him on. Just like oh he's gonna this that was it. That was his last year. Yeah, the, the mullet drew and Pat the mullet. Unbelievable, right? Yeah, Pat Silva says you are right. Thank you, Pat. All right. For almost every team in the NHL, I like that one. The mullet, the peanut butter, the hockey. I don't want to forget that. He was the Samson of hockey with his hair, says Jeff Dwyer. He was good after he lost his hair. <clears throat> I remember when he was at the Caps, he, I thought he was just okay. And then he went to the Rangers, and he, he was scoring 100-plus points a season. 100-plus points a season with short hair. I might add. Um, Caitlin is very excited that, that she got this right. She said, you should see me grinning with victory. This is why I said, Caitlin, new fan. She gets it. She gets it. Um, this was such a letdown. Sharp Shack, give me a break. Give me a reason why Yamri Yager is not the best player of the 90s or why someone else is better. Again, we're talking 1990 to 2000 or 1990, 1991. 1990, 1999, if you want to be true to a decade, okay? Um, it is Yamri Yager. I, 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 I take exception to that, Sharp Shack, that you think Yamri Yager is not the best player of the 90s. I, I might come back next week and do a whole episode on this and why I think that is. 
It, Yager is not a letdown. He was a treat. We were lucky to see him play as long as he did. I mean that. All right. Parker Beard says, I didn't catch the question, so I didn't know which player you were hoping we would name. Just the best player of the 1990s. Again, it's not the topic of tonight's quick uh, t- quick shift. Tonight's puck drop. I'm a little tired, if you can't tell. Um, but it's something I want to talk about. Um, so Ray Carcillo says, I think the fact that he bounced around so much of his career hurts him in most folks' mind. Ah, that's probably not unfair. Also, he all, was always in Lemieux's shadow in Pittsburgh. He wasn't the guy until he was an old man. Now, Ray, I don't agree with you on that, all right? So I think that definitely 91-92 cup, run, cup runs, he was in the shadow of Lemieux a bit, all right? I mean, he was pretty exceptional. We I remember he was only 18, 19 years old at that time. When Lemieux ended up having to leave because of cancer, Yager definitely stepped into the, the limelight with Pittsburgh the second half of that decade. And Pittsburgh was a dominant team from you know those years they just didn't win a cup so i think he was a, a big big name in the sport definitely the late 90s and especially when lemieux came back he was no longer in the limelight i'm sorry in the shadows of lemieux um but in the 1990s if you're like again you played in the 80s i mean this is, if you're looking at the 1990s it's it's yager all right um drew is very impressed with the aerodynamics of his flow or his hair his mullet uh pat silva leaving have a good night thank you for being here um mark pollard wants to know who is your favorite avs player just need to know so when the avs beat the flyers next time we meet you and you can buy their jersey excuse me you're replying to somebody else i i have an avs jersey i bought an avs jersey my favorite avs player today or all time mark let me know what you you want from that um and he's asking caitlin as well uh caitlin says she needs to study the team before she answers that um Okay, Sharp Shack says his stick is eight inches long and Pavel Bure is ten times the player. Prove it, Sharp Shack. Don't just tell me that. Prove it. Okay, Bure is a great player of the nineties. A great player of the nineties. He's not Yager. All right. Uh and, and you would you would throw in gear there. <laughs> uh best goaltender of the nineties? That's a tough one. All right. It's probably Patrick Waugh. Uh, but Dominic Hasek is in the conversation for sure. Uh, again, Brador would not be of the entire nineties. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, if you go back to the early nineties, there's other goalies as well. It's probably Patrick Waugh. I mean, he, he racked up a lot of wins in that time period. Um, uh, Mark Pollard says, let's go back to when they were formed in 1995, 1996. Okay. So you were excluding the Quebec Nordiques, uh, favorite avalanche player of all time. Uh, it's probably, it's probably Peter Forsberg if I had to pick one. Um, I mean, he's, he was always fun. Which it was a tragedy when he hurt his foot so bad he couldn't play anymore. So, all right, let's go. Uh, Mario Mario Lemieux has a son playing in Arizona State. Arizona State, a Division One hockey school that's coming to fruition right now. Uh, a lot of people should be looking at that one. Um, Mark wants everyone to know that I own this year's Stadium Series uh, jersey due to the Flyers losing to the Avalanche. But in saying that, he's got to buy a Flyers Forsberg jersey. Yes, you do. Um, what's funny is I, I'm one of the only people that not, did not hate the Stadium Series jersey this year. Everyone hated that but me. I thought it was a cool jersey. Um, let's keep going here. Uh, for the Avs, I'd go with Forsberg uh, or Forestberg, as Jeff Dwyer says. Uh, Forsberg was, was, a, was a rare jersey in NHL. Um, most people don't like Patrick Waugh, Andrew, but he is a great goaltender. Uh, Jeff Dwyer says Mike Richter is the best goalie of the 90s. Absolutely not, Jeff. Uh, one, yeah, great goalie, obviously great run in 1994, but not the greatest goalie of that decade. Um, uh, and Ray just found out there's hockey in the desert. And I think that's what we're going to do it for, <laughs> for tonight's show of Puck Drop Live. So just a few, few announcements. Remember, uh, shortly after this episode ends, Ray Carcillo will be going live on his Twitch stream with uh, NHL 20. He will be doing live play-by-play. And also be doing uh, some fun games on there. Uh, also, I want to thank you all again for listening to this. I think this is like the sixth puck, six, fifth or sixth puck drop I've done, um, and it's getting a pretty nice reception. So I really do appreciate it. I, I hope you enjoy the the research that I do that goes into these. Uh, just trying to give something a little bit different than just your rambling, uh, your your regular rambling. I want to put a little bit of, you know history behind it just something that you know maybe tell you something you didn't know uh it's really kind of all you can do right now there's nothing new coming out so i'm trying to do that um and just to say again uh you know i know everyone out there is is going through this in different ways uh and i hope i hope you're all getting through it uh some days are good some days are bad i know that not being around other people for some people is harder than for others i'm an extrovert i love other people i love conversing i know introverts are in heaven right now (laughs) but uh we're all going through it right so stay strong stay tough all right, be like a hockey player, right? This was this will end. You got it. It's going to end. And again, 
we're getting a lot of start, starting to get some more positive news now about the state of this thing and where it may be going. For those of you who didn't hear today, uh, Gary Bettman um, is still very committed to trying to finish the season. I, I thought I thought really I was getting worried any day now we'd hear they're just going to cancel it, but he's still saying they're going to try and do it. That gave me a little hope. I'm not going to lie. I didn't have much hope for the season ending until I heard that. Um, so, again, thank you so much for taking the time to come out to Puck Drop Live. Again, the winner of the greatest rivalry of all time in the NHL history is the Montreal Canadiens versus the Boston Bruins. Um, not really, Not really – a hard one there, but it was fun to discuss. Uh, Hunter West just said, this is my first puck drop stream and had a great time. Hunter, that is wonderful. I really appreciate you coming here. We do this every Wednesday night around 8 p.m. Eastern-ish, um, and I'm, I'm excited about that. And Ray just said, Dr. Fauci said sports can still happen too. So positive news. That's a good way to end this quick shift. Um, again, today's date is Wednesday, April 15th, 2020. It is my mother's 77th birthday today. God bless her because we... I would not be here without her, and many other reasons. She is the kindest, most wonderful woman in the world. I want to give a shout-out to my mother, publicly, Evelyn Elias. Happy birthday. I love you very much. You all have a wonderful night. We will see you next Wednesday or literally every day on We Live Hockey because we do content daily. Hunter, welcome to the program. Caitlin, thank you for guessing Yager. You are still my favorite hockey fan in the world. We will see you all next week. Have a good night. That's my